Penn State canceled a planned comedy event, purported comedy event, I don't think it would have been very funny, on Monday that was set to be co-hosted by the founder of the far-right Proud Boys group, Gavin McInnes, after a demonstration against the speakers turned violent. According to the New York Times, police stood back as someone, allegedly a, a right-wing figure, uh, reportedly pulled out a canister of mace and pointed it at a crowd of anti-Proud Boy protesters and sprayed some of them. Let's watch. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> open your eyes, open your eyes. Right eye, right, right eye. Yeah. Right. A Penn State student seemingly spit on the host of the Conspiracy Castle podcast and a co-host of the event, Alex Stein. This is more protesters reacted to Stein's arrival at the campus. <laughs> The New York Times reports that Penn State officials previously said they would hold the event to support free speech, even as they criticized what they categorized as McKinnis's quote, vitriolic and hateful language, end quote. Penn State put out a statement st saying that the threat of escalating violence causes university police to cancel speaking events. They also listed resources for people who have been impacted by this event. And for, for context, we should you know, clarify for people who have forgotten who the Proud Boys are. Um, they're defined as a far-right, neo-fascist, white nationalist, and exclusively male organization that promotes and engages in political violence in the United States. It has been called a street gang and was designated as a terrorist group in Canada and New Zealand. And Gavin McInnes started the group and has since stepped down from it. I what I thought was because he was kind of facing uh, maybe legal pressure to do so. I, that's, mm -hmm. That was my understanding. I could be wrong about that mm -hmm. because of the, you know, the pending issues with the proud legal issues they had gotten themselves into. Yes, very, very reprehensible group. Uh, so just to be totally clear, the group is reprehensible. Gavin McInnes is, has become reprehensible. Um, uh, this Alex Stein figure I find to be perhaps the most obnoxious person on all of planet Earth. Um, he's the one, I think you are familiar with him. He's the one who, he, 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 uh, he harassed that vice journalist at, um, at maybe at CPAC or some conservative, or, and he also, he, he followed AOC on the street in D.C., um, he, he's, he's, I mean, he's also done this to Republicans who he has clashed with. He's like a, he's a street mm. persona. Um, he's, he's become a bigger deal He's upside lately. down Michael Moore. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, yeah. From That's the pretty 90s. good. That's pretty good. Um, I, yeah, he's, uh, I don't, I don't enjoy his shtick. I'll mm. put it that way. Um, that said, look, he has, uh, that, the student group that invited them to speak, I, I think has every right to do that. Um, the I, the police said they had no choice but to shut down the event because this protest was getting out of hand. It did it look does, rowdy. It does. It did in fact get out of hand because tear gas was sprayed uh, allegedly by the by the pro Proud Boys side. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I would I, I think the spectacle um, almost works to the advantage of people like Gavin McInnes and the Proud Boys because their whole you know, ideas that were being silenced, were being suppressed. You know, they won't let you listen to us. They show up and they try to attack us. Yeah, um, I mean, that's what's so frustrating about this. Penn State just literally play... explicitly said, we want to have this group on campus because of free speech issues. They show up. I don't know who started what, but obviously there's an escalation, which completely justifies them wanting to shut it down. They yeah. can't have the liability of students getting yeah. hurt. Mace is not even legal to carry in a lot of yes. places because it can be so legitimately dangerous. Um, so you're right. Like there is this kind of weird cyclical thing where if you want to make your whole persona being canceled and kind of like a warrior because you're willing to go against the grain, moments like this always advantage you. So I put to you this question, is that an argument against schools, quote unquote, platforming people like this? Well, the school has no choice. Public university, 
it, it just has to. If I, this, I would advise the student group not to. And I don't think there's actually much to gain from having to listen to any of these people. So I, if I was a student group, I would not invite Gavin McGinnis for the Proud Boys to speak, obviously. But given that someone did that, um, I would advise the counter protesters not to bother. Just don't. Like, what if? These people deliver remarks to a room with like two people in it, and no yeah, one says anything, and they go weird... like they're not they're not influential or important enough to merit a count a, a, a they don't need to be responded to. They are a very small group of they're they're engaged in LARPing. They're doing live action yeah, role playing. But... They need the other side to also show up and do their live action role playing. Then we have the scuffle, and then the Washington Post, the New York Times, and NPR, and everybody has to cover it. We talk about it. Mm -hmm. If th that I, just doesn't happen, if the other side doesn't provide that, and I'm not like I'm not blaming no, them for that. doing I, it. I completely but... accept that. I understand that as strategically. But what I'm asking you is, isn't that a kind of what does that mean for the free speech rights of the people who have legitimate objections to these things? I think that in some ways the free speech framework is completely ridiculous and, and needs to be dropped by some of these people for exactly this reason. None of this is about free speech. None of this is about people's genuine openness to debate. And it becomes a parody of, I think, what are important issues when we all buy into the idea that someone showing up to a college campus with military gear and mace is someone who's a free speech warrior. Yeah, no, no, 100%. But, but they can be... Because they do have a, it's a First Amendment issue, right? It's out of, if the university took aggressive actions to not allow it, they could get sued for that as well. Well, they could when do they, what the University of Florida uh, has apparently done, which is to enforce a ban on indoor protest, which they did after a demonstration earlier this month against the selection of U.S. Senator Ben Sass as a finalist for the position of the school's president, happened, AP News reports. Uh, Sass, who is a Republican, has received criticism regarding his opposition to same-sex marriage. Well, well, Sass himself said he had no problem with the protesters who were protesting. Yeah, so his. what do you make of this so ban on I would indoor protesting? Exactly, well, they shouldn't have a ban on indoor protesting. If it's, you know, if it's in, I mean, the protests are not supposed to, you, you, you don't have to allow there to be a protest that actually interrupts, like, the functioning of the school. Which that, it didn't. But it, didn't, it did not sure. interrupt Ben Sass's. So if they're, if, I'd have to look specifically at the, if they're saying you can't, you know, be outside a classroom loudly chanting or something, that is a policy they're allowed to have. If they're saying you can't stand in the hallways and, and have posters, then I would say that's a bad well, policy. Well, I think that's exactly yeah. what happened. Well, they and not have again, that again, that's, I, Ben Sass ironic. said he didn't want that policy. Yeah, well, Ben Sass said what Ben Sass wanted, but and Ben Sass is, mm -hmm. on Ben Sass's behalf, as the response to what happened to a Ben Sass pro speech, the protesters who were on the left side of things here, they were protesting the fact that Ben Sass doesn't support gay marriage and, uh, along uh, with a number of other things, are the ones that are being quote unquote censored. And this is the thing, we go around and around and around. We all know that there's not a single well, person are. on the right who, who will defend um, the right to do an, a non-confrontational, non-interrupting indoor protest. And so none of this is really about any of it. Like, none of it matters. <laughs> like, none oh. of it is about anything at all. It's just people trying to, they know that this is an issue that makes people feel, like, people like to feel like an underdog. For years, Republicans, I think, rightly identified this, the allure of kind of a victim status and how that was playing out on the well, left. Where did they learn that from? Oh, right, yes. And right. now they are doing it in ways that I feel like aren't even a, a, a connected to people's legitimate historical victimization. I'm sorry. Like, if you were saying slavery was bad, so you know Jim Crow was bad, I have a lot more interest in, in endorsing that, people trying to get actual equality in the world, and people kind of manufacturing or cherry-picking moments of being told to do X, Y, and Z or stand here and move there on a college campus as real victimization. N none of it is, should be the sine qua non of your existence, but here we are. Mm. Uh, well, this was a reminder that campus is back <laughs> in full swing. There used to be, uh, for a while, there was a lot of these stories. I, I used to really cover kind of campus protests as, as one of my main beats, and there was, you know, one of these a week for like a five-year period, and then COVID happened, and there was obviously less now we, activity Now we really know why you're against the shutdowns, Robbie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, you got me, Bree. You got me. More rising after this, but in lowercase for some reason. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute.